Today we're making tatty birds with posh tails and we're using them in a junk journal. I'll show you exactly how to make one today and then we'll glue it onto a journal page. They have hand or machine stitched plumage which is made from lovely little scraps of paper. Today's video is day six of junk journal January and the prompt for my page is stitched. These are all of the amazing channels in this month's collaboration. So there'll be a playlist in the video description box below so you can watch every single one. The process steps for making the bird I also have for you today. These are in Pinterest. I produce one every week with my weekly tutorials. So let's just get on and make one. So the first thing we need to do to make one of these tatty birds with posh tails is find a bird that we can augment. And I have been using birds from a couple of kits, so I thought I'd just very quickly show you those. But you could, of course, find some nice images in some beautiful books. I'm sure there are lots of beautiful birds that can be embellished. So I have been playing with Tracy Fox's bumper birds. And also, this is one page from an Artie Mays kit. I think it's called Fussy Cut Birds. What you want is quite a large bird. And the reason I say that is when you come to do the sticking and a bit of sewing, it just needs to be big enough. Otherwise, it'll be just far too fiddly to put the stitches on. So I sat the other day and I cut a few out. And I'm going to pick from here a large one. That would be great, wouldn't it? I really like this eagle and I think what I'll do is I'll I'll do this one and I'll note that the colours in the feathers are the teals and purples and we'll use that to pick the scraps of paper that will go on the tail so let's find a few scraps of paper so I've pulled out some scraps of paper to decorate the bird I've got some oldish bits of book page and a few of these pieces in a a family of blue shades. That's really nice, isn't it? I think that would work very well. Really, any of your scraps look gorgeous old music paper. That's a piece of paper that I waxed and stamped on. I made some of those a few weeks ago in a video. One of the pieces of gold paper in some of the bird tails just comes from, you know, the party hats that come out of crackers. So make use of anything and everything. A bit of an experimentation with some washi tape that didn't go tremendously well. So that looks as though it could work. And to the back, I've also got some textured materials. These are absolutely stunning. I'm going to use the tiniest hoardy type pieces of these to add a little square at the base of the tail. So if you want to use fabric and you feel like getting a bit experimental and having fun, I mean, look at that then this really is a great opportunity to use tiny amounts, but really create something incredibly beautiful. These are from a box that Tapeology very kindly sent to me. So with all of my videos, check out the video description box down below and just see if there's any links or discount codes for you. But what I'm going to do to begin with is give my tail a little base to work on. And for that, we can use any piece of paper. I won't use the music paper, but I just want something that's a square or a little bit of a rectangle, really, to give me something to start with that I will glue the scraps on. And I'll, hopefully this will make sense in a minute. So what I do is I put a bit of glue on a small piece of paper. And if this ends up being too big, doesn't matter, we can trim around it. And I look at the bird and I think, where do I want those feathers to point and where do I want them to come from? And I found when I was practicing this, it's really quite an important step. Otherwise, it's quite difficult when you're adding, let me show you, the feathers to get something that's jaunty and pointy and a bit cheeky. So with this, I think it's an eagle of some form, a kestrel, I don't know. I want them to splay out down here. So here's the one I, I had created. But with the others, like I think it's a wren, I really wanted them pointing up. So I had my back piece 
pointing up to tell me where to go. And then all you need to do is take some of your little bits of scraps and do something magical with them. So, not too wide is the key. However, if you go too narrow, it gets a bit more difficult to sew. So when you are adding your strips, just think about the direction you want them to go in. So I'm going to have a nice cream and green one as a starting point. Maybe I'll go in the middle. So I'll add a bit of glue at the top and get that on. And I'm not too worried at the moment how long my strips are, or rather I'm not too worried about them being too long. I don't really want them to be too short. So think about the length and think about the direction and just start adding your strips and imagine maybe this splayed tail. I definitely want some gold in there early on. So I think I'll take a strip out of this. I'm sure every bird will then look a bit different and will be just magical. And this bird is then going to get incorporated into a journal spread for my Junk Journal January collaboration page, which I'm very excited to be doing. So anchor your feather at the base again and just lean it out to one of the sides. Pick a different colour. Where did that purple go? Let's have a bit of this. I really like the torn edges, so maybe on this one, I don't know with the washi tape if it will work, maybe I can get that to tear, because I think the tattier the better for this. We are not going for super tidy. That's probably long enough. Yeah, like that. Really like what's happening. And I think what I'm going to do, put that on the left hand side. Glue on the back and front because I'm going to put something on top in a minute as well. So that can go on. Probably need sort of five, six scraps and precision isn't needed. So lovely purple and gold looks really good, doesn't it? Whoop, I'm sticking to it. Should we have a bit of music paper? So I think that would add a lot. That's gorgeous. And I think that can go just on here. Maybe like that. Let's have a look at the one we've made. And maybe I will use, because the colours work, some of this gorgeous textured fabric. I will cut that. I don't trust myself to tear it. And I might layer that one on top. So it's sort of a little bit of creativity, albeit aided by an image that we've already got. So what do we think? Do we need more? Do we need something a little bit extra and layered on top? Let's pick something else. One more, I think. Maybe something to contrast. Oh, I like that. It's a bit... It's a bit wide. I think I'll just I'll take off the side where I lose the least green. Take that down. I want the gold still to show and I want the music paper to show. But that works really well. I can still see the gold. There we go. So now what I want to do is Add some V's to the plumage just to give it some, I suppose, some style. And at this point you can decide how long you want each of those pieces to be. Let's make it quite pointy like that. I think it comes together when we do this. My tip would be don't make every feather the same length. So let some of them be a bit shorter than others. And I'm doing a V, but on some of the other birds, I did just cut at a jaunty angle as well. I'll show you in a second. And I don't like how fat it is at the top here. 
So I am going to just trim down a bit so that it comes in nipped in at the waist. A bit more like a skirt really, isn't it? Just take a bit off there, that's better. Let's see how that looks. How are we doing? At this stage, if you want to, you can add extra decoration, anything sparkly, anything. Let me show you this. So this one has a few little green sequins at the base. And obviously I've incorporated just a little bit of glitter paper that I had left over, so I want to use that up. What I need to do is cover this join here and that's where a couple of these other pieces of beautiful paper and fabric come in and I only need the tiniest amount. So I take a about a rectangle, I can always trim it down. So basically a piece to go over the join of your scraps where they meet the bird and I quite like doubling up at this point and adding some of this netting on top because it adds a bit more texture. And this is this is something I want to have a go at more in 2023. I want to bring a bit more fabric into what I'm doing, some more texture. I'm going to treat myself to some new supplies. I'm, I'm pretty frugal with what I've got. I'll put that on top there. And now what we need to do is bolster the back and then we can add some hand or machine stitching. So we're on step four already and we're going to bolster the plumage with either masking tape or washi tape or you could use more paper. The, I think the downside of using paper is, is there's a tendency to put more glue on the paper and if you do put this through a sewing machine then that's not as helpful but you could do the whole thing with just extra pieces of paper. I decided because I have a few washi tapes to use just one that I'm not too bothered about. The washi tape will make it easier to sew. So I'll show you what I mean. I just put pieces over the back and it means that when you're sewing through this, particularly on a sewing machine, you're not going through just a single sheet of paper, which I found on my sewing machine is not too easy to manage. Now I have a pretty cheap Hobbycraft sewing machine. I think the needle's quite thick. It might be that on your sewing machine going through a single sheet is, is okay, but just adding some extra depth here, thickness, robustness, makes it easier to deliver that tatty effect and we'll just have a look at that in a second as well. Now that we have something ready to sew, we need to either put it through our sewing machine or get a needle and thread out and have a little play with some different styles of stitches. And let me show you what I've done, just to give you a bit of inspiration. So take your sewing machine or your needle and thread and first of all, sew around that extra bit of fabric that we added at the top here. I just make a little square around that. And then have fun going up and down the feathers. Let me show you some of the ones I've done. So to add a tatty effect, I went up and down the feathers. I incorporated the little extra bits of thread, just, you know, wrapping them in basically, wind them around my finger and catch them under the thread. And I think that adds just something extra. If we try to be tidy on this one, it just won't work. And as I say, on this one, I added some extra sequins. If I'm honest, I think the sequins have come a bit too far up the body. And if I did this one again, I think I'd make the plumage a little bit longer, but I like the zigzag stitching. I had to go at some others. So this one faces a different way. He's got the tail feathers cut at an angle. So remember on this one, we had it cut into V's. I did do the little bit of fabric at the base there and I've just gone up and down and I, I'm not even going up and down once on each tail feather. I really am getting messy and tatty and going up and down and ziggy zagging and, and not being tidy and that felt really good. On this one he's also got gold incorporated, he's got the fabric at the base of the tail. Again I would I think be bold and go longer with this one 
but I like the tattiness and I like the jaunty angle and I was benefiting from putting some of that extra washi tape on the back there and obviously the candidate that we chose to create one today was this beautiful kestrel eagle in these teals and purples and you know there's something really special about his tail now so I thought we could use one of these and add it to a journal page for our junk journal January collaboration for the prompt stitched. When I talk about junk journal January or junk journal Ju July this is the sort of thing I'm talking about it's filling a journal handmade possibly with spreads one for each day in the particular month so we use a prompt and we get creative and we just use all that lovely ephemera that we've been creating during the year it's my chance to use a lot of stuff up so I am day six today stitched and I'm really excited to fill a journal in fact I made a junk journal the other day precisely for this purpose so that I would have a bit more room for it to be filled compared with these which have definitely got slightly ridiculous openings now because I do fill them with tons and tons of stuff. So let me pull out the journal that I made. If you want to see how I make these journals I'll link a video in the description box down below. Let's fill page six with our lovely bird. So I've got my supplies laid out around me. This is the really fun bit. I've got some little strips of decorative paper that I've literally laid on top of a book page and I've done a similar really wiggly zigzag and running stitch and kept the threads dangling so I think that's stitched as well so I'll choose maybe one of those to put on the page I've got some pretty flowers and I felt the pink sort of went with the colours of the bird I've got oh, look at the paper I've got some beautiful collage paper that I've made from Amazon packaging paper and a little bit of dusky green spotty paper. Stunningly beautiful, I think. I mean, look at that. Look how beautifully they go. And obviously I've got my glue and I've also got one of my envelope pockets. So I made these some time ago. They're absolutely fabulous for using in journal spreads such as for this collaboration. So they've got... A little bit of faux stitching around the flap here and I think faux stitching is acceptable as well today. They've got collage on the front here, they've got a flap at the back and they've made a little bit bigger and more robust by adding a hinge down each of the sides. It just means you've got more capacity to put things in and I thought the purples on this one go really well with my lovely turnip. So let's do some gluing and get some on. I'm perfectly happy for his head to stick above the page but obviously not above the cover of the journal and I feel like I want to just first of all make this page more robust but also add some interest. So I don't really know what I'm doing at this stage. Let's just go for it. As you can probably tell with the section we've just been through on the video where we make things I do try to be organized um, the process steps I hope they help let me know let me know if they help you and don't forget there are oh, I don't know nearly 50 of them now on my Pinterest page which you are very welcome to have a browse around and use and if you don't have Pinterest then obviously you can take a screenshot of those process steps and use those to help you and I hope you're joining in with Junk Journal January and looking at everything that everybody else is doing get some layering going on I love that I can see the little bits of mica and I love the gold shall we just see how the bird would sit on it right so I want I know it's got gold on it but I want the bird to just hide the edge of the brown paper. I'm not going to throw that away, those are lovely little pieces. I'm still going to use them. That's it. So it it changes from the green spotty to the collage paper underneath the tail rather than seeing that edge. And I really like that. I might just get that down. I 
think I won't take too long deliberating today. Sometimes I definitely procrastinate. Quite a lot of glue on the tail. I'll get that on. And I think the colours in this are really helping. I think that green is incredibly beautiful. Let's move him up a little bit. I think it might need a border with some pen. I can always add an extra label or something, but we'll just get the main page brought together. And on the right hand side, I want to bring this together with those purples and let's pick let's pick one of these which do we think it's a bit neutral that's a bit of cheekiness it's quite pink i think this one has got less going on and i want the texture i don't want to cover up too much of my turnip so why don't i just cut that down let's see if we can get that on there somehow so that we show yeah, that's good. So I'm going to have a bit of a bit of this here. Give it a point, and we can still see the turnip leaves. And we'll have a pocket. We can always add extra stuff too. Where am I going to put my flowers? Can they go on here somehow? Let's have a little bit showing. That's okay, isn't it? Sometimes we've got to compromise and lose some of, a, um, uh, of an image. I can't talk today. Get that down. Ideally, I would have seen all of it, but I can't. I want that go there. Can that tuck under? We'll bring that up. We'll get that under there. And we've got that layering effect going on. I'm really happy with that. I can't design all of these up front. I just kind of pull out some elements and put a few things together. So we'll get that under there. We've got quite a lot of our flower visible. And obviously this is sticking out, but not beyond the cover, so that's fine. And there's plenty of glue, and I'm just going to do something about those edges. Tatty birds with posh tails for day six of Junk Journal January. Thanks so much to Meg Journals for organising this collaboration. Check out all the videos, they're linked down below. And if you'd like to make a Junk Journal, then follow my step-by-step -step tutorial. I'll link that here and I hope to see you soon.